Hey, how's it going? So on today's show, we're going to do a little bit of general two stuff, uh, namely concentrations and how to convert between different units of concentrations, which I've done in prior videos, both here and my old YouTube site over at Gen Chem Concepts. Um, but given the stuff happening currently in Flint, Michigan, um, there's some things you hear in those stories that are kind of relevant to the things that we're kind of talking about at the moment. But since we are talking about Flint, Michigan, I do have to be a little more specific than, say, the thing happening in Flint, Michigan. Because um, ideally, you know, this thing's going to be on YouTube for a while. Um, and even though I can't imagine this dumb show lasting until five years from now or whatever, um, it might be, say, 2020 and you're currently watching this. If so, hi, uh, 2020, how you doing? Doing all right? Yeah, all those hindsight and vision puns i'm getting sick of them too but man that episode nine dude that final fight between kylo ren and ray or should i say ray skywalker yeah oh man that was awesome the one between finn and phasma that was yeah I, phasma did kind of go out like a punk but yeah what do you do she's the boba fett of the trilogy um but anyway um yeah, when I talk about Flint, Michigan, for you, 2020, I'm not talking about the thing that's undoubtedly happening in Flint, Michigan right now, for you. I'm talking about the thing happening right now for me in 2015. Remember the whole lead in the water, toxic lead story? How bad that... Yeah, remember that? Yeah, it's coming back to you, right? Um, so, poor Flint. I mean, honestly, I read that story, and... My reaction was the same as when I read that Hunter Thompson shot himself. It was like, yeah, that probably happened. Because as long as I remember, Flint's just been one thing after another. And I've never been to Flint. I'm sure it's a lovely town filled with lovely people. I just know that when Hunter, uh, not Hunter, when Hunter Thompson, when um, Michael Moore shows up to your town to film a documentary, he, it's probably not because things are going great. And no, future people, I'm not talking about the 2015 thing, or even the 2012 thing, or the 2011 thing, or the 2002 thing. Uh, I'm talking about 1989. And some of you are going, I wasn't even born then. Well, exactly, right? I just... So, seriously, if you're watching this in the year of our common era lord, 2015, and... You know, there's like a charity you trust and they're collecting money so Flint can have some water that's not filled with lead. Um, throw them a few bucks and give Flint some water that's not going to give him brain damage. Or, you know, it's like four or five years from now, you're watching this, just probably still sucks in Flint. So just go to like, play, like Donor's Choose and find some classroom in Flint and throw them a few bucks or someplace. Just do something to give Flint a chance because it's been 30 years. I'm tired of like picking up a paper or a website paper. It was the last time I read a paper. Um, and seeing another Flint story. I just poor guys. So hanging there, Flint. But anyway, when you're reading about what's happening in Flint, every now and then you will run into a new story that talks about this thing that we scientists refer to as data. Um, like this one Washington Post uh, article that I saw, uh, which is where most of the numbers I'm, I'm about to give you are coming from. Um, they, you know, talk about what's going on is they give actual values, which I think is an important context. Instead of just showing you a pissed off Midwesterner with a jug of brown water, which fun fact, lead solutions are generally colorless. So that's the colors doesn't have anything to do with the lead concentration usually um, don't get me wrong if your water is coming out of your tap and it's brown or got brown flakes or something that's some nasty shit and you shouldn't be drinking it probably literally nasty shit. Um, should i beep that i mean like kids might be watching uh, eh, fuck it. but anyway one number you hear when they talk about the lead pollution in Flint's water is uh, parts per billion. And um, 
Parts per billion is really just an extension of a concept you're already familiar with, which is percentages. You know, you want to find the percentage of anything, it's just part divided by whole, multiplied by 100. Um, for more dilute solutions, we might use parts per million, which is parts divided by whole multiplied by a million. Um, for really dilute solutions, we might use parts per billion, which is parts divided by whole multiplied by a billion. So, again, it's really just an extension of the percentage. You know, instead of times 100, you know, per cent, you know, the cent, century, yeah, you just caught that some of you, right? It took me a while too. Uh, but instead of doing it per cent, per hundred, we're doing it per million, or like I said, for really dilute solutions, per billion. Um, so one number you hear that gets thrown around a lot um, is for the Flint, Michigan story is 15 parts per billion. Uh, that's uh, the level of lead in water that the EPA, EPA considers an action level, which means that they kind of uh, come to town and go, hi, you may want to take some action and clean that crap out of your water, figuratively. And maybe literally, if it's brown like that. Really, that's nasty. Um, so again, parts per billion it's just like a percentage, but instead of doing it per hundred, it's per billion. So it's 15 grams of lead per billion grams of solution. Usually, you know, it's done in masses. Uh, in general, Kim, we, uh, by this point, you're probably getting, starting to get familiar with the molarity uh, unit, which is, uh, you know, moles per liter. So if you wanted to kind of have a better idea of what the concentration of lead is, given your experience with molarity, you, know, you could convert one concentration to the other. Um, and remember, the way you do that is you just take it one half at a time, because concentration is always something per something else. So in this case, you know, we have uh, 15 grams per billion grams, 15 grams of lead per billion grams of solution. We want to convert that to moles of lead per liters of solution. So again, you take it you know, one half at a time. We want to convert the grams of lead to moles of lead over on the top. And on the bottom, we want to convert uh, billion grams of solution to liters of solution. And when you take it one side at a time, um, you'll see that Hopefully it'll click that these uh, conversions are ones that you've done since way back in general one, back in like chapter one or chapter four. So going to the top side, we want to convert grams to moles. Nah, we've been doing that for a long time by now. You know, it's just use molar mass. So lead's molar mass is 207.2 grams per mole. That'll give you 0.0724 moles of lead. For the bottom half, if you want to convert grams to liters, um, since it's that dilute, you know, or since we don't know the actual density, we can just, to give us a rough idea, use water's density of one gram per mil, um, because it's probably really, probably close to that or reasonable enough where it's a pretty good educated guess. So you know, it's just a density to volume, or using density to convert mass to volume. And when you do that, you yeah, get 10 to the six or a million liters. So 15 grams of lead per billion grams of solution translates to 0 0.0724 moles of lead per million liters of solution. And you divide the two and you get 7.24 times 10 to the negative eight molar. So that's how concentrated the lead has to be in drinking water for the EPA to take notice. And once they started to take note it was that concentrated uh, I believe they sent a team from Virginia Tech over to take some samples they, they go through hundreds of homes and take a bunch of samples and they found I think it was like over 400 and half of them you know the concentrations were well above 15 parts per billion you know like some some of them in the thousands you know um, in fact there was one sample that according to the Washington Post that was as concentrated as 13,000 parts per billion. So extremely higher um, than the 15 parts per billion. 
Um, so, in fact, that's concentrated enough where you could really just call it 13 parts per million. It's actually more concentrated than you can actually use the next concentration up, right? So, at 13 parts per million means you have 13 grams of lead per million grams of solution. And if you wanted to convert that to molarity, we can do the same tricks that we did, or not no, tricks, um, illusions, Michael, no. Um, the same math we did a minute ago, you know, grams to moles, and at the bottom, use density to convert mass to moles. Um, you know, same math, and that'll give us, you know, 0.062 moles of lead per thousand liters of solution. Which, trans which you do the math, it comes out to 6.3 times 10 to the negative five molar, um, which is a lot more concentrated um, than the 10 to the negative eight molar um, we just calculated a minute ago. Right. Um, but even still, I mean, after going through, um, you know, a little over a semester of Gen Chem and probably a Gen Chem lab, you look at those numbers and you think, well, that's really st it's still not that big of a concentration because, you know, in lab, you work with stuff that's 0.1 molar or sometimes one molar, two molar, here a molar, there a molar, everywhere a molar, molar. Um, but, you know, when you're looking at chemicals and trying to see whether or not they're safe, um, you know, you don't just look at the identity or the concentration, it's really, you gotta look at them both. It's identity and amount. And in the case of lead, lead is toxic enough where, yeah, you get to the 10 to the negative five molar, that's something to be concerned about. In fact, that's the levels where, you know, EPA like officially legally calls your water toxic. Um, but, you know, another um, example that I like to give when it comes to, you know, trying to looking at both um, similarly, or at the same time, not similarly. Um, similarly, sorry. Um, is you know with sodium fluoride, which um, sodium fluoride, some of you may recognize from toothpaste, especially if you use things like crust, is a common um, fluoride source in toothpaste. And in crust toothpaste, uh, it's about 0.243 percent uh, weight volume. Now weight volume percent. Uh, actually, I just found out, you know, prepping for this, that there's a, the pro version of Crest actually use a tin fluoride, but I'll stick to the old-fashioned sodium fluoride. Right. So um, a weight volume percent, again, it's still a percent, although it's technically not really a percent because it's two different things, top and bottom, but we tend to ignore that for convenience. But that means that there's 0.243 grams of sodium fluoride per 100 mils of solution. Uh, we typically do mass per volume and the volumes in milliliters. And again, it's per cent, so it's usually per 100. But uh, yeah, let's say you want to translate that to a molarity. Right. Again, you look at both top and bottom, you know, on its own. Over on the top, we want to convert grams of sodium fluoride to moles of sodium fluoride. And on the bottom, we want to convert 100 mils of solution to liters of solution. So like before, the top um, conversion is just a gram to mole conversion. And that'll give us 0 0.00589 moles of sodium fluoride. And the bottom is even easier because we're just converting 100 milliliters to liters, which you know, is 0 0.1 liters. So you take the two and divide them, that gives you a concentration of 0.0589 molar, which is more concentrated than the lead in the water, but again, it's I concentration, you know, amount and identity. You know, sodium fluoride isn't nearly as toxic as lead. Um, and in fact, um, but I mean, sodium fluoride um, is, can be toxic, uh, in fact, an alternate use for sodium fluoride, at least it used to be this way, uh, sodium fluoride used to be a rat poison. And in fact, if you go online, you'll see a lot of people who kind of use that as an example of why the government shouldn't put fluoride in our water or to why it's bad because it's a rat poison. Yeah, at much higher concentrations, it's a rat poison. In fact, to get the lethal dose, what's lethal to a human, it's about five grams 
of sodium, of sodium fluoride that you have to ingest all at once. Um, which is another difference, you know, with, you know, the lead thing, you know, it's that concentration, you know, over just continued exposure, drinking water at that concentration. You know, I didn't mention that earlier. Um, but yeah, it's another thing people kind of look at, you know, ex length of exposure. Where with, you know, sodium fluoride, yeah, if you, you have to ingest five grams of it at once to be lethal. And again, there's only, there's about a quarter of a gram per hundred milliliters of toothpaste. Um, which is usually, I, don't know, I know in America we're not quite metric yet, but 100 milliliters is a lot, is a lot more than the you put on your toothbrush. Um, in fact, um, let's say you wanted to end it all and you decided that sodium fluoride would be the easiest way to do it. Um, so you try to ingest enough toothpaste to get the lethal dose. You know, if you do the math, uh, it comes out to be somewhere, but depending on how big the tube of toothpaste you use for a big thing of toothpaste, it's like between 10 and 15 tubes of toothpaste. Um, which, you know, two things. One, um, that's that much of that kind of stuff in your stomach. I'm not even sure most people can keep, you know, 10 tubes of toothpaste down long enough for it to actually do anything. You're probably going to throw it up around tube five, you know, that's like, you know, drinking milk or the egg scene and cool hand Luke for all you movie folks. Um, but the other thing too, you know, there, there are a lot more, um, a lot better ways to kill yourself. Not saying you should kill yourself, but if you're going to do it, there are a lot more dignified ways to do it than toothpaste. I mean, you got to think about what's going to happen, you know, after you move on and your friends talk about you. You know, it's, um, you know, hey, did you hear uh, Bill died? No, what happened? Oh, killed himself. No way. That's terrible. How did it happen? Um, toothpaste. What? Yeah, he, he took like, he ingested like 12 grams, 12 tubes of toothpaste. And who the f kills himself with toothpaste? I don't know, you, you know Bill. He's from Flint. Call back.